Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter and welcome to worship on this Easter Sunday morning. I'm so glad that you're joining us today. As we would typically do, we begin worship by saying, He is risen, and the response is, He is risen indeed. I have a few announcements that I want to lift up for you this morning. The first being that you received this in your email, if we have your email address, and it's our poster for you to print out on your home computer and put it in your uh, window today. It doesn't matter if it is colored or if it is black and white, that's fine. However you can print it out, please print it out and put it in your window today. And then I also wanted to let you know that we do have these communion cups for Holy Communion today. If we had your address, these were delivered to you, but if you're visiting with us online today, you can choose any bread that you have in the house, a bagel, a donut, a pretzel, a cookie, whatever bread element that you have, and any kind of juice or wine element or drink element that you have. And we will be blessing through the communion normal service today. So those elements will be blessed by the virtual reality that we are in today. So please join us for communion if you have these or if you have some elements of your own at home. We have a special announcement from our missions minister today, Jenny. Good morning, everyone. It's me, Jenny, from your missions team. I'm here to tell you about two missions opportunities that are going on now until mid-May. The first one is we are continuing to fill the food pantry shelves. If you'd like to make a donation, please send a check to St. Paul and in the memo, write food pantries. I will then do the grocery shopping and deliver the goods to the food pantries. The second opportunity is we are feeding healthcare workers at Good Shepherd Hospital. There is a link to that on our Facebook page titled Help the Heroes. You can make a donation to a restaurant by either picking the day or the restaurant and the restaurant will take care of the meals. They give you a price per meal, lots of options, lots of days. As this continues to go on, we not only feed the healthcare workers, but we're also supporting the small business owners when we make the donation by purchasing the meals. Until we can meet again in person, please stay safe and take care of yourself. Love and hugs. Would you all please join me in the call to celebrate Easter? Beloved of God, hope is alive and we are redeemed. Shout the good news. Christ is risen from the grave. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen for you for me, and for all of God's children. He is risen so that all may know love and peace. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Now let us rise with him. Let us step forward into new life with Jesus. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen to thee, indeed. Let us join in our first hymn this morning, which is our favorite, Christ the Lord is risen today.
Good morning. Happy Easter. Glitch number two, folks. Let's try that communal prayer of invocation again. I'm sorry, my microphone was off. God of resurrection, we offer thanks and praise as we worship this Easter day. We pray that you will find us prepared to be your vessels of grace and love in this world. We pray to be guided by your spirit and to hear you calling us to go into the world, sharing the good news that Jesus is risen from the grave. Increase our faith and strengthen our courage for our work as disciples of the Risen One, in whose name we pray. Amen. We have a special passing of the peace time this morning. As I've said in the past, if you're with family, please pass the peace amongst yourself. If you're by yourself this morning watching, give yourself a big hug and say, peace be with me. But here is a special video we put together for passing of the peace. I hope you enjoy it today.
fight is only I'm a giddy young one. So when the man comes, there will be no no do. Have pity on those whose chances grow ten. There ain't no hiding place from the father of creation. Yeah, yeah. One love. What about the one? Join in singing our response to passing of the peace, which is let there be peace on earth. There'll be a short introduction and then sing together, please. <laughs> children how are you today this week we delivered these bags for all the kids in the congregation and they have some treats in them for you from miss jan the first one is this piece of paper it's got lots of coloring in it that you can do this one is really cool on the back because it says he is risen and that's all about what we're here for today about remembering how God raised Jesus up after Jesus had died on the cross. I know that that's hard to understand, but someday we will all understand it together. All we know from the stories in the Bible are that Jesus was crucified, but on Easter Sunday morning, everybody went to the tomb and found out that Jesus had been raised up. God resurrected him. That's the word we use, is resurrected. And how we say that is, he is risen. So how about if you color this page today and have your parents help you put it in your window so that folks will know that you have been thinking about this day and how special it is. There are some other things in your bag. There is a cross that has all of these little sequin pieces on it. And you can glue these on your cross and then you can peel off the backing that looks like that and you can stick that on a folder or on uh, one of your tablets or something and have that cross that's all decorated. And then there's something really special inside. This is some Play-Doh that Miss Jan made for everybody. And we've been talking about being vessels for God throughout this entire Lenten season. And so Miss Jan made this Play-Doh for you so that you can create your own vessel. You can make a cup or you can make a chalice like this maybe, or you can make a plate, or maybe you can even make your own person out of this clay. But it's really soft and squishy, and I encourage you to play with it all during the time they're having worship this morning. So you've got lots to do while we're having worship today. You've got Play-Doh to play with, you've got a cross to decorate, and you've got some coloring pages and some activity pages to work on. All of these are symbols of how much God loves us and how God raised Jesus up from the grave. That's what we're celebrating today, that Jesus is still alive in this world.
Have a good rest of your day, kids. Bye. Now, I would like to invite you to, to some... special music this morning is provided by Gage and Liam Bachman. I hope that you'll enjoy. to the time in our worship when we have the opportunity to pray together, to lift up together those things that we are concerned about or those things that we want to share joy about. I ask that as we go into this time of prayer, if you have things that are on your hearts today, to please hold those in intention and God will hear those through the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to share some prayer concerns with you that I received today that we want to lift up together. For Thanksgiving, we want to lift up our being able to be together in worship today through this modern technology, how it connects all of our hearts together as the Holy Spirit moves among us. We want to lift up all of those essential workers in this world, the retail workers, the doctors, the nurses, all the medical personnel, but especially some that are going behind the scenes, like electricians and plumbers and internet providers and cable providers, 
Those are the unsung heroes that are keeping us all on track during this time. We want to lift up all of the folks who are making personal protective equipment, PPE. There are a lot of folks making masks and giving them away to folks who are in need of masks. And we also want to lift up everybody that's been tuning in on all of our things on our social media sites and sharing that with one another so that we can still stay connected. We have some prayers of strength and healing today for Sue Schick. She's home from the hospital and her surgery went really well. She's recovering now. For Bev Cherney's stepfather, John, who needs to have some more surgery, but they're trying to determine whether or not that's a feasible option right now in the midst of COVID-19. We want to lift up Grant Raphael, whom we've been praying for. Grant is recovering and he's doing better. He's been able to chat with his family via FaceTime and those sorts of things. So that is a great recovery for Grant right now. We want to lift up Carol's friend, Janet, who is a medical personnel and she was exposed to COVID-19 and she's waiting to find out if her test has come back positive. And of course, we want to remember all of those who are suffering through COVID-19 right now. We want to lift up all of those who are mourning their loved ones that they've lost through COVID-19. And we also want to lift up the family of Bernetta Jobin. She is the best friend of Brian Sly's godmother, Shirley. And she has a daughter, Renee, and her son, Curtis. And if you could pray for the family and for Shirley, that would be great comfort to them right at this time. We want to pray for those who have lost their jobs because of COVID-19. And we want to pray that we continue to feel connected and strong with one another during this time when we have to social distance to get ahead of this disease. And then we also want to remember to pray for our local and state officials our police personnel, our firefighters, our paramedics, all of the folks who are doing everything they possibly can to help us through this time of social distancing. As I said, if you have some prayer concerns this morning, would you please hold them in your hearts as we pray together now? Let us pray. Oh God of great miracles, thank you for this day when we celebrate once again the power of your love in the resurrection of Jesus. We stand in awe of how deep that your love is, and we pray to be ones who will run and tell everyone we meet that your love is powerful enough to redeem us from the darkest hour we face. We are filled with joy in the knowledge that you have conquered the grave, and we have nothing to fear. We are humbled by your grace, which has saved us, and we pray to live into that grace more fully each day. We have so much to be thankful for this day, for being able to be in worship together today and have the Holy Spirit connecting our hearts through this virtual medium. We are so thankful, Lord, that we have this opportunity of modern technology to help us be together. We're thankful for all the essential workers who are on the front lines, Lord, and we are especially mindful this day of those who are behind the scenes, electricians, plumbers, internet providers, cable providers, helping us to do as much as we can to keep our days as normal as possible. We are thinking about all of those folks, Lord, throughout this nation who are tuning in with us today, and we're so thankful that they're here in worship with us. And we're thankful, Lord, for everyone who's making PPE, the masks that are needed, and those companies that are going online quickly to make ventilators and other things that are needed for the medical personnel to help fight this disease. We lift up to you for strength and healing this day, Sue Schick, John, Grant, Janet, and all of those who have been diagnosed and are suffering with COVID-19 at this time. We pray, Lord, that your healing hand would be upon them. We lift up to you those who are mourning. We're especially thinking of the families who have lost their loved ones to COVID-19. We pray your comfort would be with them. And we're thinking of the family of Bernetta Jobin, best friend to Brian's godmother, Shirley, mother to Renee and Curtis. We pray that your healing and comfort would be with them. And we pray that Renee would have an extra dose of strength as she now takes over Bernetta's job of caring for Curtis. 
We pray for those who are struggling in this world with so many things beyond COVID-19, those who are hungry, those who are homeless, those who are experiencing poverty, those whose worries seem to never end. We're thinking of those who have lost their jobs due to the shutdown, Lord, and we pray that there is aid that is coming to them quickly. But we also know, Lord, that you are with us in the midst of these struggles, and we pray that we continue to deepen our connections with one another through all of the means that we have. We pray for our world and its leaders, and we are especially thinking this day, Lord, of our local and state officials who are helping us through this time. We're thinking of our firefighters, our paramedics, our police personnel who are helping us get through this time of being sheltered in place. And we pray, Lord, that the world's leaders would listen to you to walk in the path that leads to grace and peace. Help them to be resurrected out of their agendas for power, Lord. Help them to know that you are leading us and you are shining your light on the path that will help us walk in the way to peace. Help us, Lord, always to be peacemakers in this world. Lord, there are those intentions that we are holding in our hearts this morning, so we spend these next few moments in silence with you. Lord, on this resurrection day, we pray to feel your presence surrounding us and filling us with new life. Help us to walk away from the fear that we cling to, the fear that freezes us like the guards. Help us to be more like Jesus, the one who lived and died for us, the one who is risen, so that we might all know life eternally in you. Hear us now as we pray his words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we have a special response song after our prayer. It's one of our favorite praise tunes that we use. It's called, This is Amazing Grace. Let's sing together. Sin and darkness, whose love is mighty, 
Barbara Forrest reading us today's gospel lesson. Good morning. Our Easter Sunday scripture is taken from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Listen for the word of the Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapping lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Our Easter Sunday scripture is taken from the book of John. Would you all pray with me for a moment, please? Holy One, we are thankful for this day and for this reminder from your holy word that Christ is risen, that your love lifted him up out of that grave. And even though Mary may not have realized that it was Jesus to whom she was speaking, and even though we may not realize that we are speaking to Jesus, he lives in this world. He is with us. So Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would be among us now and help us as we learn 
I pray that as we go into this time of learning that I would get out of the way and simply be the vessel through which you are speaking. Let it be your voice that is heard here this day, Lord. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds would be acceptable to you, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I have to confess I'm feeling a little bit like Mary right now. I don't know what's going on, but we're back and we're together and that's all that really matters. I want to tell you a little bit of story about the vessel that should have been here today. I was creating a vessel at our shop where we go to pottery together. A bunch of us girlfriends go to pottery together. And that vessel was to be put in the kiln and fired so that I could paint it and then fire it again so that I could have it here for today. Unfortunately, due to the shelter in place, I wasn't able to get that. And um, But Steve has a picture and he's showing it on the screen. I think I'm not a weather person, so I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go with all of this, but I think it's on this side. Yeah. That's the vessel that you see in the um, PowerPoint slides that I was working on to have here today. Now, here's the story of that vessel. That vessel is created by putting two pieces that match on top of one another. So I threw one piece and shaped it out a little bit, and then I threw the next piece and I shaped it out a little bit. And you need to let those things dry a sufficient amount of time so that when you stack them together, they will hold firm. And then you seal them with this stuff that we call slip, and you can put a coil around that seal so that you can um, smooth it together and it looks like one vessel. Well, the day I was making that, I was impatient, very impatient. And it wasn't going as I wanted it to. And the next thing I knew, it was already past class time was over, which we're always welcome to stay there and um, finish what we're doing. But I really wanted to get out of there. I had other things I needed to do. And so what I did was I put the two pieces together too quickly. They weren't dry enough. They weren't strong enough to support the weight on the bottom. And as I put the pieces together and I was using the slip and I was using the coil to put them together, the next thing you know, I had a misshapen vessel. It didn't look anything like it looks in the picture now. It was misshapen and I accidentally pushed it a little bit too hard. And because it didn't have the power on the bottom piece to hold the top piece's weight, it all of a sudden started to look like it was cattywampus. It was all a mess. And so I took it over to the wheel and I put it on the wheel and I thought, I'll try to fix this. I don't know what's going on, but I couldn't fix it. I didn't know how to fix it. And I was ready to throw it away. To me, that piece was dead and I was going to get rid of it and start all over again. I was in near tears because I was under such pressure to make sure that that vessel was ready to go on Easter Sunday morning. You know what? they say about the plans we make in God's time, don't you? Anyway, I was just about ready to cut it off of the wheel and throw it into the reclaim bin. And my teacher, Andy, came over and asked me what was wrong. And being near tears, I said, this piece is dead. I, I can't fix it. And she said, that's okay. You don't need to fix it. We're going to resurrect it. And Andy sat down at the wheel with me and she began to put her love and her patience and her calm spirit into that vessel that I was creating. And she get, went very, very slowly shaping and reforming and pulling it back together. And the next thing you know, Andy had resurrected that piece out of the reclaim bucket that it was headed for. The piece that you're looking at today is the piece that was resurrected from its grave. Today, we talk about resurrection. We talk about how on Good Friday night, all of the disciples thought, it's over. I'm ready to walk away from this. I'm ready to throw this away. All of this stuff we were doing with this Jesus because he's dead. They've killed him. They've gotten rid of him. He is gone. Now what do we do? Let's just walk away from all of this mess. We know that Peter walked away quickly because he denied even knowing Jesus before he even was crucified. 
those disciples walk away and they say, this is over. There cannot be any saving of what was with this one that was among us. But then the ladies go to the tomb on Easter Sunday morning, what we call Easter Sunday morning. It was just a regular beginning of the week to them. And they are going there to anoint the body with spices, and along the way they're thinking about how could it be that they would get in to anoint the body, which is something that was done regularly in that time and in that culture. Because there was such a heavy stone in front of the door. But when they get there, they realize that the stone is rolled away. They go in and they can't find Jesus. He is gone. They come out and they learn that Jesus has been resurrected. That which was once dead, that which was once gone, that which people were willing to throw away, that vessel of God was resurrected. And Mary began to weep because she didn't know where Jesus was. And she spoke to a person that she saw there, and it turns out that that was Jesus in his resurrected form. When he spoke her name, she knew it was him. God resurrected Jesus from the grave. He brought back to life that which others had written off as gone, that others had written off as dead and unable to come back. God did it, because God doesn't give up. I've been thinking a lot about how I was really ready to just throw away that piece, to just get rid of it and start all over again. I didn't have time for this. I gave up on that piece. But my teacher came, my rabboni came, and sat beside me and said, this can be saved. And as I watched her do that, the piece that was a mess all of a sudden took on a new form. It began to become the vessel that I wanted it to be, the vessel that could do something in this world, hold wine, hold flowers, be a decorative piece. Andy didn't give up on that piece. God did not give up on Jesus. I've been thinking about how it is that we in this world just are so quick to write off other vessels. How we are so quick to write off the people in our lives that are the vessels of God's grace in and around us. We say, they can't be saved. They're irredeemable. They can't be lifted up. We're so quick to just say, I'm done with them and walk away. And yet, in our midst, we also have the power of resurrection. What if, what if, like my teacher at pottery class, instead of just walking away so quickly, we stood side by side with that vessel who might be hurting in this world, and we tried to do whatever we could with our love and our grace and our patience to help them be reformed into the vessel God wants them to be? What if, instead of just being so ready to throw things into the pit, we decided that that vessel in front of us was worth saving? I'm reminded of a story from when I taught disciple many years ago. We were talking about the problem of homelessness in this world and one person in the class had the idea that homelessness was caused by a person's inability to stand up for themselves he was ready to throw everybody that's homeless away but then he was challenged by another person in the class the other person said to him what if that homeless person was your brother what if that homeless person was your mother and the person who had thought that perhaps maybe homelessness was a curse that he did not ever want to help in began to rethink and to look at those vessels of God in a different way to see that the folks that are sitting on our streets that are lying under newspapers that are sleeping on benches needed to be cared for lifted up they needed resurrection in their life 
they needed to be resurrected out of that dead place. And what he ultimately realized was that he needed to be resurrected out of his dead place of judgment. Don't we all need that? Don't we all need to be resurrected out of those places where our spirit is dead and not thriving? Don't we all need to be resurrected out of those places where inside of us we live in judgment or fear or anger or hate or recrimination? Don't we need to be resurrected into the new vessel of life that God is calling us to? You see, the miracle of the resurrection is, is that God does it for all of us. It may not look in our life like it looked at Jesus' time. I've been questioned about why it is that a loved one who has passed can't be raised from the dead like Jesus was. I don't know. I'm not God, I have to admit. I don't know why that can't happen. But what I do know is, is that even that loved one we've lost is resurrected into new life with God because of Jesus being resurrected. And I know that we are resurrected out of our grief when we are in those moments of pain. God reaches in with love and care and patience. God surrounds our vessel with love and care and patience and forms us into something new and beautiful in this world. Resurrection, as I told the children earlier, is not easy to understand. I have been in the ministry over 20 years and I still don't really understand it. But what I believe today is that God does resurrect. And perhaps in the 21st century, it might not look like it did in the first century when Jesus came out of the grave. But I believe that it happens. I believe that there are vessels in our midst that are God's vessels calling out to us to be resurrected from those places where we are suffering. Right now, we're all in fear about the COVID virus. That's all I hear is about how we're so afraid of the COVID virus and what it's doing to us. Isn't it amazing that something we can't even see is causing us to learn to be resurrected out of our focus only upon ourselves. The resurrection of kindness is happening in our midst. The resurrection of sharing is happening in our midst. The resurrection of love and giving is happening right in our midst. Will we be the vessel who allows those sorts of resurrections to fill us and lift us up? Or will we continue to live as vessels who are afraid, broken down, ready to be walked away from? Oprah always says, what do you know for certain? And as Pete Rollins would say, it's when we get into those certainties that we have troubles in our lives. But today I know one thing for certain. And the thing that I know for certain is this is that God is never giving up on us. No matter how many times God has to resurrect us up out of the dregs we find ourselves in, no matter how many times God has to reform our vessel, no matter how many times God has to lift us up, recenter us, open us up, burn us in the fire, get us through the trial, no matter how many times God is resurrecting us. That's the promise of this day that God is lifting us, resurrecting us from all of those places that are harming us into new vessels that are vessels of love and peace in this world. I hope someday to be able to show you the vessel that I created and what it will look like when it has all of its many colors on it. But if I don't, I do know the story of how it was resurrected. And I know the story of how Jesus was resurrected. And I know the story of how God is resurrecting us. Let us be the ones who live that Easter story in this world. Going out and being the vessels of resurrection for God in this world. Amen. I want to thank you so much for sending in your offerings. When I got into the office the other day at church, there was a stack of offering envelopes on the desk that thick. 
And so that is just amazing to me in this world that we are continuing to support St. Paul, even though we're doing things differently, even though we've been moved out of our complacency of being in the sanctuary into a new way of being together. Even though there are glitches, even though there are times when we wish that we didn't have to do this, even though there are times when we wish we were going to have our mimosas and muffins together in Fellowship Hall. We are still supporting what St. Paul is doing in this world. And your support today helps us for tomorrow. I can't even begin to tell you how thankful I am for that. We're going to sing a new doxology that we always sing on Easter Sunday morning. Steve has the video and the audio ready to go, and it's to the tune of Come Ye Thankful People Come, so I think you know it, know it very well. It's called Come You Easter People Come. Let's sing our doxology together. Would you please pray with me the prayer of dedication for our offerings gracious God we bring these offerings as sign of our love and devotion to you bless them and use them to create new life for your children here on earth bless us as givers with generous hearts which respond more faithfully to your call with love and action in Jesus name we pray amen Friends, as we prepare to go into our time of communion together on this special Easter day, it is a good and right thing that we come to the table letting go of all of those ways that we feel that we are not being resurrected in this world. All of those places inside of us that spiritually we might be dying. We call that a confession of sin in the Christian tradition. So I call you now into a time of silent confession and then we'll come back together with a communal prayer of confession together. Let us confess our sins. And together. Forgiving God, we confess before you and each other that we have often lived as if the tomb of death and fear is our home, rather than your kingdom of love and grace. Instead of rising up and living faithfully as Jesus' disciples, we shrink back and try to hide while the world and your children continue to hurt. We confess that we cling to our old lives instead of trusting in you to create new life within us. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to rise up into the new life of resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear this good news, that even though we do fall short of the glory of God, in the name of Jesus we are forgiven. Hear these words of assurance of pardon. Beloved of God, hear these words of resurrection hope. By the power of God's love, our sins are forgiven and we have been given new life. Amen. Beloved of God, this is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ, open for us in love, so that all may experience its life-giving transformation. Here, no one is a stranger. Here, everyone belongs. Here is where we find forgiveness and in doing so, the strength to be forgiving. Here we become a part of the communion of saints that have gone before us, and it is here that we become the foundation for those who will come after us. So it is then that we gather here to feel Christ's holy presence gracing this meal, to be nourished by the bread of life, to receive the cup of compassion. Come one and all, 
for all are welcome here at Christ's table. Grace and peace be with you and also with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. O God of our risen and living Savior, we praise you this day for the love with which you raised Jesus from the grave and in so doing gave to us the gift of everlasting life. Bless us therefore by your Holy Spirit so that we may ever offer to you our thanks and faith and that being united in Christ, we may be your faithful disciples. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, a night that we observed just a few short days ago. Jesus sat at the table with his disciples and he took bread and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying to them, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body which is to be broken for you. Each time you eat the bread together, do it in remembrance of me. On that same night, he took a cup, and giving thanks over the cup, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood so that sins will be forgiven. Each time you drink of the fruit of the vine together, do it in remembrance of me. Would you please join me in the consecration? Holy One, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of Christ's body. In the sharing of Christ's blood, we are all sealed in your covenant of love and forgiveness. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these common elements made from grain and grapes, and let them be for us the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with him, one with each other, and one in ministry to and for the world. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is the time when if you have this little cup that was delivered to you this week, we can take this as our communion. If you have used a bread element or you have used something of a bread element at home and another kind of juice or wine or some other drink, you may use that also. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, all of these elements are blessed. To open the little cup, you first pull back this cellophane piece that is over the top of the wafer and lifting it off the top of the cup we lift it up and say thanks be to God and then pulling back on the tab of the cup we open the cup partake of it together saying, thanks be to God. Would you please join me in the communal prayer of thanksgiving for the communion? We thank you, Lord, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all of Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us go forth to serve you in this world in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning that we'll sing together is called The Day of Resurrection. You'll know that tune. And there are three verses, so let us sing together.
and sisters, I thank you for being here today with us in Easter worship, and I thank you for your patience for all of the glitches that we have had. I would ask you today to please share our online worship service with others so that they might be able to enjoy a worship if they're not able to have it from their own home churches or if perhaps maybe they're new to the church. I would also ask you to please enjoy your family that you're with today. And if you know someone who might be alone, give them a call today and wish them happy Easter and let them know that you are thinking of them. Let us go in the peace of the one who is resurrected. Let us go as resurrected people, ones who God is lifting up each and every day of our lives. I invite you to stay on the online stream as we hear a beautiful postlude by our music minister, Renee Kruper. It is called The Risen Lord. Bye and have a good day, everyone. <laughs>